Hi and welcome to episode 28 of the Give Me a Crown Knitting, Spinning and Bits and Pieces podcast. My name's Nina, also known as Give Me a Crown on Instagram, Ravelry, Pinterest and it's also the name of my Etsy shop where I sell project bags and zipper pouches. I'm recording from uh, country New South Wales and there's a bit of a storm rolling in at the moment so I'm going to try to record this before the rumbling gets too severe but if you do hear a few rumbles of thunder then um, my apologies. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who welcomed me back after my break. I uh, really appreciate the kind words and um, support that everyone has shown me while I've been moving house. Uh, if you haven't already joined the Ravelry group, then feel free to pop on by. It's Give Me a Crown in the Groups tab on Ravelry, and there's a Say Hello thread there if you want to introduce yourself, which by no means is necessary, but it's nice to know who's out there. This week's episode is going to contain a few finished objects, a bit of progress on my sock yarn blanket, as well as some amazing acquisitions that I've picked up in the past week. My first finished object are my striped socks. So these were some basic socks that I knit with Novita Bolka yarn, which is a Finnish yarn. I quite often talk about it because uh, I'm from Finland and when I go back there I, I like to pick up some of this yarn. It's a thicker than fingering weight yarn. It's I don't know if it'd be a sport weight or or even heavier. It I cast on forty eight stitches for it and it creates a snug fit for me. Um, and I spoke about this a little bit in the last episode. So it's just a rib leg, heel turn with the reinforced heel and a star toe and I'm pretty happy with how similar I got them there's a little bit more green on the tip of one but they're almost matchy matchy I might have skipped one row of the toe in order to try to get them even more matchy matchy but um, it's good enough for me so they are done and I'm looking forward to wearing those the the yarn is a wool and um, polyamide or nylon blend, so I think it's 25% polyamide and they wear really well in particular in boots, which I've been wearing a lot of recently as I traipse around the garden watering the plants out here. So my next finished object is a project that I started in the past week and I finished it. Um, it is for a friend of mine over in England who has been diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer and she's a knitter and we had a lot of fun when she was over here a few years ago chatting about knitting because it's a, a craft that she's picked up since I've lived in England so it was fun to have a new thing in common and um, and I thought that with her love of knitting and sheep and various things a barble hat might be a nice gift for her as she goes through some pretty crazy stuff. So this is my barble hat with the beautiful sheep on it. So many people have knit this up recently and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hat. The colour work in it is not what I would necessarily call beginner friendly so if you haven't done colour work before it might be a good idea to just practice on a bit of something a little bit simpler with perhaps just two colours and where the number of stitches in between the colours is less than five stitches because then you don't have to do any um, any twisting of the yarns in order to catch the floats but if you want a challenge then of course by all means try it out. I knit this hat from a few different yarns so the green down here, the dark brown and then this sort of dark 
greeny colour. Uh, Debbie Bliss, Cash Merino, Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> yarn. They're leftovers that I had from some other hats that I knit. And it's a beautiful yarn for hats. The cashmere makes it super, super soft. Not sure how much there is. 12% cashmere. Oh, there's also acrylic in there. So 55% wool, 33% acrylic, and 12% cashmere. And it just makes for a, a beautiful hat. It's very soft. It's a little bit floppy. So if you want a stiffer hat, it's not necessarily the one to go for. But I've made a few beanies out of it, and I love it. Uh, the white yarn is a Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's the luxury yarn in the 10 ply weight. So it's a bit thicker than the Cashmerino, but it, um, I, it was the only white that I had in a thicker weight. So I thought that I would give it a go, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. There's not not too much of an issue with the with the different weights of yarn. I won't put this on my head because it has been washed and is ready to get sent off. But I just wanted to mention the how I blocked the top of it. So I got a little bowl and after I'd washed it I popped the bowl inside the hat and then I carefully placed the bowl on top of a uh, detergent bottle, <laughs> my wool wash detergent bottle, so it was just suspending it up in the air so that it could rest like that to dry and I think it's actually done a very good job of neatening up the crown. So that is the bubble hat and I think it's beautiful and I want to knit myself one so I just need to probably order some yarn but um, I'll have to use, bit, use up a bit more of my stash before I put some money into Aran weight yarns because I don't use them that often. But, um, yeah, I definitely need, need a bubble hat myself. Four works in progress. I have been working on my sock yarn blanket. So I took a photo of it out on the washing line last week sometime and I'll pop a photo of it in here. So at that stage it had 80 squares on it and I had added three more squares but I've also since then added a couple more. So the squares that I've added in the past week are from a kind viewer of the podcast and a member of the Ravelry group. So this rainbow coloured one is an opal sock yarn. This, I'm not sure, it's kind of an olive green colour, is from West Yorkshire Spinners. And I really liked working with that one. It's a bit of a rustic yarn, uh, but I imagine that that would make some really nice socks. This self-striping one is a Stray Cat Socks and I've been really looking forward to using some Stray Cat Socks and I have been stalking out their Etsy shop recently. They're over in New Zealand and they've got some great great self-striping socks, sock yarns. Um, so I'll be getting some of that soon. Not necessarily in those colours but I'm thinking about there's a, a nice grey and red one and then there's also a bluish one, so I'll have to have to make up my mind soon. I've also then added in this Renanoli. So I love Renanoli sock yarns. They're a, a fairly tight twist on the yarn, so they make very durable socks. And also the colours are really, really pretty. There's some beautiful browns golden brown, golden orangey browns in here that I really really like. And then this silk striping one is a Patterns Croy sock yarn and there were some other colours that 
would have popped up so it seems like there's quite a few different colours in the stripes but I'll have to use up those other colours in some other project. I'm thinking about some scrappy scrappy socks at some point so and I've got one more cast on but it's still yet to be um, knit up so there's only I think two rows on there at the moment but this is some Miss Click Clack so everyone knows uh, that I love Miss Click Clack and it's good to be working with some of her yarn again so that's the progress on my sock yarn blanket uh, and I don't have any other cast-ons at the moment so I have been thinking about what I should cast on next but there seems to be so many things that I want to do but I think at the top of the top of the list at the moment is potentially a hot water bottle cover uh, I've been catching up on some of my podcasts and I saw somebody was knitting one recently and with the colder weather turning up it might be time to to knit a hot water bottle bottle cover just to keep me warm um, in the in the cooler nights and I've also got the idea of perhaps knitting a pullover so there's a few different pullovers that I've been looking at but one in particular is called Breathing Space by Vera Valimaki so I've talked about her before because I, I like her patterns and I recently knit a, a cowl from one of her patterns but a few of the uh, people that have knitted up I really like the look of their pullovers so this is Horda 555's breathing space and this one I like a lot which is Finn Frost's breathing space so it's a variegated yarn or speckle dyed yarn with a grey and I bought some circus tonic yarn uh, recently late last year early this year which I was uh, planning to use for a pullover perhaps a folded pullover or or then something like this so I need to look at my yarn do some swatching I might choose to actually try to do it with three different colors so maybe get some of my Miss Click Clack involved and um, I'm sure I'll also get some socks on the needles before too long so if anyone has any recommendations for sock patterns that have come out in the last few months or, or something that is just a classic then I'd love to know um, I think the lights were just flickering which is a little bit concerning um, but I don't hear any thunder oh now I do okay so I better get on with this um, yep so sock pattern recommendations I'd love to hear about them because I should really have a pair of socks on the go as well so on to acquisitions uh, the rain got a little bit intense there so I took a bit of a pause but um, I mentioned last week that there's a little town near here called Karkor and it's a bit of a historic village very cute houses and buildings uh, there are some antique shops and a toy museum which I haven't been into yet but there's also a pottery gallery and shop which I've been into once a couple of years ago and bought a few pieces and I was keen to check it out again so I checked out their website the other day and I saw that they were selling yarn bowls so I sent an email asking if they had any of a particular type of yarn bowl in stock and they said they did so they arranged for a couple of the yarn bowls to be taken over to the shop when it was open this weekend and I popped in there yesterday and I picked myself up a yarn bowl so this is the yarn bowl that I got it's a beautiful piece and it has a cute little sheep on it and I love the detail it's even got little you can see the wool on the sheep and I just want to pet it it's super cute it's a great size yarn ball it's just got the card in there at the moment um, definitely fits a cake of yarn and a few other pieces so it has 
holes to thread your yarn through if you just want to keep your yarn in there all the time or this one if you need to be able to take your yarn away with you so I'll mainly be using this one I think because I'll put my yarn in when I'm at home and knit on some projects then I can take my yarn out of there again when I'm off traveling and wanting to do some knitting elsewhere but it's a gorgeous bowl it has the potter's markings on the bottom so Louise Purcell is the potter who makes these and she also makes all sorts of other amazing amazing pottery pieces so I highly recommend checking out carcorpottery.com where she has examples of some of her work and this is her card Louise Purcell she does a lot of custom work in particular animals and, and things that um, she recreates other people's pets and things in pottery which is just amazing um, she also has a Facebook page and she's also on Instagram so definitely check her out uh, if you're in the market for a yarn bowl I'm sure that this is not going to be my last because it's just so cute I mean who doesn't need a few yarn bowls around the house just in case you have one project in one place and one project in another place so definitely impressed with that I also bought a few other small pieces of um, pottery which are beautiful and I was also happily surprised that there was some spinning goods and some yarn in the shop so I picked up some soy silk and it's a byproduct of manufacturing tofu so I think I'm going to be combining this with some merino on my spinning wheel and seeing how it works up I might also maybe do a bit of reading up on soy silk before I use it but I saw it and thought that I had to give it a go I also picked up these gorgeous buttons so humming alpaca buttons and they're clay buttons I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to use them for yet but they're just so cute little little alpacas on them so adorable who doesn't love an alpaca uh, so yeah so if you're ever driving from Bathurst to Cowra I highly recommend uh, popping by the Carcoal Pottery um, gallery and shop in the I think it's a courthouse um, oh, it's open on weekends so definitely check that out and um, otherwise you can always get a hold of Louise online through carcoalpottery.com or her Facebook page or Instagram what else? Um, I also decided to stop by the Blaney Farmers Market this morning um, and the rain's getting heavier again. Sorry about that. Uh, I think I'm just going to have to push on because otherwise I'm never going to get this recorded. But uh, Blaney is about 20 minutes drive from here and I wanted to start checking out some of the different markets around here, both farmers markets and any other types of markets that I, I stumble across. Uh, there were about 30 different stall holders from selling things from wine through to uh, bread, uh, local produce, honey, all sorts of things. So I picked up some ginger fudge because I've never heard of ginger fudge before and it sounds interesting so I'm going to be having some of that later. That one is made by Yesteryear Preserves in Cowra which is in the other direction from here and I also picked up some tea so this is loose leaf tea from tea carts it's called green with envy and it has green tea grown in uh, North Queensland here in Australia uh, the girls themselves were from Dubbo and that's their card they had a, a a lot of different types of tea but this one sounded interesting because it was from North Queensland and it also has fruits and things in it so uh, rose petals, pineapple, mango, peach and sunflower blossoms so I'm looking forward to trying that out and 
and I think that's about it. Um, I'll have a bit of chatter at the end for anyone who's interested, but if you're not, then thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate you spending a bit of time with me. For those who are interested, it has been a little bit warmer this week than last week, which is good, but I'm sure that the, the cold snap will be back again soon, especially considering the strain that uh, we're getting at the moment. I'm still settling in and, and getting into a routine, so I have managed to get my sewing studio pretty much set up. I think I need to get a bit of furniture just to just to organise myself a little bit more, but I have started sewing again, which is a lot of fun, and I will be adding some new items to the Etsy shop, hopefully later on this week. So there will be some snap project bags, which people seem to be enjoying, and and probably some pencil cases and pouches and and I'm working on a new DPN storage pouch so hopefully that'll be along in the not too distant future. I was asked about the friendliness of the locals and how it feels moving into a country town and admittedly I'm not one to sort of put myself out there and, and jump up and down um, at the at the best of times so I'm sort of easing myself in but I, the people that I have met have been wonderful very helpful and friendly and um, and letting me know that I can contact them if I need to um, the folk at the post office have been great and considering that's pretty much the only only sort of shop in town um, Yep, I haven't had a chance to meet too many other people. There is an agricultural store that I did pop my nose into and they seemed friendly but I didn't need any um, any sort of products to make my sheep happy or anything so didn't pick anything up from there but uh, they do have some gardening equipment so at some point I might, um, might pick up something from there. Uh, people along the street when I've been walking past say hello so that's nice but I think it might just take a bit of time for them to sort of see me on a regular basis me to see them and, and to start up those conversations so kind of figuring out what there is to talk about maybe but um, definitely definitely seems like a friendly vibe but um, yeah I think I just once I've settled in a little bit more then I might get a little bit more chatty with with the people that I come across I've also been asked a little bit about uh, speaking Finnish and, and that kind of stuff but considering the rain is getting heavier and heavier I think I might need to leave some Finnish lessons for a future episode but uh, yeah, if there's anything in particular that you'd like to know just ask I have spent most of my life outside of Finland but I do feel very very patriotic and passionate about things Finnish so uh, yeah if I can if I can share some particular phrases or or things about Finland then I'd love to do so and maybe I'll actually chat about sort of where I'm from in Finland I don't know if I've actually mentioned that before so I'll do that in a future episode but with the rain getting heavier I think I'll leave it there and get on to editing this up so that I can get it onto YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate that you take a bit of your day to spend with me. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Either private message me on Ravelry, pop into the Ravelry group, or comment on YouTube. Uh, and that's it. So, I hope you have a lovely week, and I'll see you soon.